Well, hello. I'm Emeril Lagasse, and welcome to the Essence of Emeril. You know, today I'm going to make a couple of terrific dishes with one of my favorite, favorite meats, pork. And what I like about it is it, it's just so versatile, that what you can do with it. You know, so today I decided that I'm going to show you first a few of the many things that you can do with pork. And I'm going to zero in on a cut that I think can fit any bill out there. Now, the thing about pork is that, like many times as I've told you about chicken and boning chickens and using the various cuts about chicken, I feel the same way about pork. And the pork loins that usually come in, you can buy them in different sizes, and that's what I recommend you to do. The only thing that I do recommend you to do is to have the butcher at your local grocery store or your neighborhood meat market, your neighborhood butcher, just have them remove the chine bone because that's the difficult part of a pork roast or the pork loin. And like any loins, there are two ends of it. There is the loin end and there's the chuck end. The loin end being the most tender going up to the chuck end, which is the most fattier or not as lean. And there are different ends and different pieces of the whole pork loin. If you buy them, it saves you a lot of a lot of time, but particularly a lot of money, and I'm going to show you the way to do that right now. Now, this is a very, this is about a third or a quarter of, of the size uh, of a whole pork loin. And I told you earlier about having that wonderful butcher of yours taking with a bandsaw is how they do that, this piece right here which is called the chine bone. Now, the one thing about the chine bone that I want to tell you is that the chine bone makes terrific sauces and gravies. In particular, I don't know what it is that is in the pork bones themselves other than a lot of gelatin and flavor. And that is, is that they're fabulous in tomato gravy or tomato sauce. You cut them up in little pieces and brown them off with some onion and a little bit of garlic and start and simmer your tomato gravy or tomato sauce. Mm, boy, I'll tell you, it is fabulous. So. We eliminate now the chine bone, and we have this, this pork roast or uh, pork loin. Basically now what we could do, which I'm going to show you, I was talking earlier about the loin end and the chuck end. Well, here's the loin end. You can see that the loin end right there, this is the eye of the, uh, of the pork loin, and you can see how beautifully marbled it is and very lean, the grains coming across. Uh, then this is the chuck end, and you can see that the chuck end, the chuck end has a lot more marbleization as this does here. You can see that the fat is through it. Not that it's, it's not any less quality, it's just a different end. Now, for the chuck end, what I like to do with these, and I suggest for you at home, economical, save the chuck end to make some pork medallions. And what I'm going to do is show you from this roast how to do that. Let's just say we're going to go with maybe a chop or two chops. We're going to just go with two chops and we'll just cut. Now, if you've been to my restaurant in New Orleans, that's probably the size of a pork chop that you get right here. This double cut pork chop that we call it. You could do that. You could also just cut them like I just did and you can sort of make an incision that way and open it up or a little pocket and you can stuff them. You can do all kinds of creative things. But for these medallions, here's how simple it is. You see right here is the bone end, which is the spare rib end. What we're going to do is we take a little boning knife and just work right against that little bone right there. You see that, how I'm doing that? And take that off. And now if you do enough of these like this, you have little spare ribs or little ribs that you can do. So now you've got another meal. If you did the whole pork loin, you can put them inside of a little bag. You can freeze them for later, save them for tomorrow. So now you have chine bone for that tomato gravy, and now you have ribs. And now I'm going to show you some of those pork medallions. Now by taking that, what you can do is just sort of trim it up a little bit. And uh, this stuff here, you can save the grind it. You can make a little breakfast sausage. Now think about if this size, you take about a half hour, 45 minutes out of your day, do some of this, put the chops away from one meal, uh, do some creative, save a piece for a roast, have a little bit that you can grind and make a little breakfast sausage. You've got some ribs. 
Woo, boy, I'm telling you. You just saved the fortune right here on the essence. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to cut these little medallions from the chuck end. And uh, the thing that I like about these little pork medallions, as you can see right here, is that what you can do is cut these and you're sort of making these little pork steaks. And then you just flatten them out, pound them out, and you can bread them. And then uh, you really have got some wonderful little pork medallions. Now, if you want just regular pork chops, you can just cut single pork chop as I'm doing just like that. You can do four or five of those from your loin, put them away. And if you want, you can just save this for a pork roast. And let me tell you something, when we come back, I'm going to saute up those medallions and show you a traditional German sidekick. Don't go away. Stay with me right here on the Essence of Emerald. We'll be right back. Welcome back. I'm Emeril Lagasse, and uh, this next recipe is just a little rendition of a German dish that combines pork, which they use quite a lot in German cuisine. But hey, we use a lot of pork in Louisiana cuisine. And noodles, one of my favorite noodles, and I'm going to show you. It's a little simple spetzel, you know, those little dumplings. But first, I was just sort of pounding my pork while you guys were away there. You know those little medallions that I showed you, right? We're just sort of pounding them out a little bit, and I'm going to show you exactly how easy what we're going to do with them. Now, once we get them sort of flattened out, what we're going to do is we've got to, got to give them a little taste, a little essence. So I'm going to use a little bit of that wonderful spice of mine. And you've got to sort of season both sides so that both sides taste delicious, because then only one side is going to taste good. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take these medallions and we're going to simply just dredge them in a little seasoned flour. You see that? We're going to dredge them in a little seasoned flour and get them really good and dredged together, as I'm doing right there. You want to really shake off the flour and then we set them. And by the way, let me tell you something. You've got to season that flour so that that flour tastes good. And you've got to season those breadcrumbs. Just put a little of that essence in there and whoo, boy, are they going to taste good. Now. What we're going to do is we're going to just dredge them in this little egg wash. And then those seasoned crumbs, as I was telling you about, that's where we're going to put those guys right there. We use one hand for dry, one hand for the wet, the egg wash. Keep your hands nice. You want to sort of just pound that and press those crumbs, just like I'm doing, just like that. You see how nice and coated that is? And we'll bring that over there. Then we'll put this in our egg wash. And we'll do the same procedure. And then I'm going to show you how simple a little, making a little dumpling, a little spetzel is. You want to just put that breadcrumbs right in there, press them down. Really, really delicious. So simple. Now the meat just tastes absolutely, it's going to taste delicious. Look at that. We're ready to go. And um, now what we're going to do is, I'm going to show you about making a, a simple little spetzel. Well, what is spetzel? It's just a little dumpling and used in a lot of cuisine in Germany and in Austria. And I, I just really love them, all those little dumplings. I just really kind of get all psyched up when I taste those little things. Now, let me show you how we're going to make those. We're going to start with some eggs. I got a couple of three eggs in there that we're going to start with. Now, that's the first thing that we're going to add in there. Then what we're going to do before we start cooking this dish together, we're going to just sort of beat those eggs up a little bit. Let's sort of whisk them up, get them really good and light. Now, what we're going to now do is we're going to add, we're going to creolize these. Hey, whew, in Germany, if they had that spice, whoo, they'd still be there eating right now. So now we're going to just add a little bit of that spice of mine, and then we're going to have to give it some liquid, so we're going to add just a little bit of milk. Now you can always add, remember, you can always add, but it's very, very difficult to take out. So now, what do we have? We've got, we've got a little egg, we've got a little milk, 
We've got some, mm, some taste. And then I'm going to add a little bit of fresh parsley and uh, maybe a little chervil, whatever you kind of like. I like to add just a little bit of butter inside of mine. And then what I did is I actually took some flour and sifted the flour. I added about a tablespoon of baking powder. And that baking powder, that leavening agent, is what's going to just poof those little dumplings right up so they're perfect. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a little bit of that flour a little at a time. And what we're doing when you're making spetzel is you're sort of actually just making a little, a little dough is what you're doing. That's all you're doing is making a little dough. Now you see, as I said, you can always add. Now look at this dough right here. And I'm using a whisk. I want to make sure we don't have any lumps in there. And we kind of got this, you see the consistency of that? It's a little runny. It's just a little, little bit, a little runny. So we don't want it too thick. We don't want it quite as thick as a as pancake batter, but it, it, it's a little thin. Now, let me tell you, one of the greatest ingredients with spetzel, not only in the batter, but certainly as well as when you're cooking these things, which I'm going to show you, I like to add a little fresh grated nutmeg. Now, if you don't have one of these, if you don't have one of these neat little nut, nutmeg boxes with a, a little nutmeg clove, shame on you. But if that's okay, you know, if you, uh, you know, just sort of, when you're done with it, you just sort of put the uh, nutmeg clove right back inside of there, and then you just forget about it. Now, we're going to add a little bit more flour. Now you can see how we're really getting this dough. If we needed to because it was too thick, okay, if we needed to because this dough was too thick, that's when we could go back and just add a touch more of milk and just to thin it out a little bit. Now, was that difficult? Not at all. So let me show you what we're going to do now with this dish. I've got some lightly salted boiling water because the spetzel, this dumpling, they have to be, they have to be poached. They got to be poached a little bit. And then I also have the skillet getting hot for our pork medallion. And uh, what we're going to do is you can use any kind of sieve that you have at home. I have a little colander sieve here. And what you're going to kind of do now is you are going to take your spetzel batter, okay? You're going to take your spetzel batter, and what you're going to do is you're going to just sort of put a little spetzel batter, and I'm going to show you this in a second, in that little sieve, just like that. Then what you do is you take a little spatula and you start pushing through the sieve that dumpling batter. You see what's happening there? Getting, uh, making that little spetzel. You see them popping in there? Now, they're not that big, so they're not going to take a long time, minutes and minutes and minutes, for them to cook. And uh, so you just keep pushing your spetzel. Now, the thing of what you can do is you can do these ahead of time because what we're doing is we're poaching these, and then you can take them out and dry them up on a little, uh, on a little um, paper towel or a little towel to dry them off, okay? And then you're going to cook them, you're going to saute them up when you're ready. Now, let's finish up this dish really quick, and I'm going to show you simplicity. I got a little bit of olive oil in my skillet right there, okay? And I've melted the rest of that little butter in a little pan here for our spetzel. So I'm going to start sauteing our pork medallions, okay? I'm going to start sauteing our pork medallions right there. And, uh, you know, we pounded them out earlier, as I said. Now look, you see the spetzel? Those little dumplings are really starting to look good and they're cooking up really delicious. When you're ready, you just take those little guys out. You drain them up real good, okay? And as I said, in that skillet that has a little bit of butter, you just put those dumplings right in there. You see how simple that was? Or you can just dry them out and you'll be in there. Now to finish up this dish, I like to add a little bit of parsley. I'm going to add a little bit of that Creole spice. And they're already hot, so we're just sauteing them real quick. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to set our spetzel after we saute them a little bit right there. And then we come back and uh, we just finish up our pork medallions. You see how beautiful they look? You cook those up anyhow for about three, four minutes on the side. till They're properly golden brown. You garnish them up. Just really, really, really simple. 
If you want to add a little bit of cheese on that spetzel, hey, knock yourself out. And when we come back, I'm going to stuff a pork loin. Don't go away. Stay with me right here on The Essence of Emerald. Welcome back. I'm Emma Lagasse, and uh, hey, you can just put just about anything into a pork roast, you know. I mean, I do. I mean, just be creative with it. I mean, since two of the classic stuffing ingredients are usually fruits and nuts, I'm going to start with those today. But look, I got some, uh, some pork sausage, or better still, if you trim your pork roast, just like uh, I'm going to show you here for a second. You see this? After we took that bone off, you see that right there? Well, then what you can do is you can just cut it a little bit to trim it up, just like I'm doing there. And these little pieces right here, that's what you can use for either your own sausage or you can just chop them up and use that because that's all it is, right? So what I've done is I've taken a little homemade sausage, some pork meat and a little bit of fennel seed and some spices. And you'll see I'm getting all those little grandus down there is what we call them down there in Louisiana. Now, what we're going to do is once we brown that off, here's the fruits. We're going to use some apples, and uh, I'm going to use some of those great pecans. Yes, and a little bit of shallot, and a little bit of uh, parsley. And uh, listen, if that sausage starts cooking too much, that sausage starts cooking too much for you, and it starts to get a little sticky, you can add a little bit of oil. Or if you don't want to add a little bit of oil, if you think it's got enough oil, you could add a little stock. Let's taste this guy here. Oh, yes. And add a little bit more salt. You got to taste. And add a little freshly ground pepper. And then, if it always, if you don't want to add a little bit of oil, you can always use this little secret ingredient. You know that secret ingredient? Agua frio. Cold water. Just add a little bit of water to it. We'll take that stuffing off and we just let it cool or put it in the bowl and let that cool right there. Very simple, just like that. And uh, it doesn't have to be uh, breadcrumbs and bread stuffing. It can just be great sausage. Now, you get this pork roast. What you should do is you just make a little slice like you're making a little pocket. You see that? You're making a little pocket. You just sort of butterfly it out. And if you want it even to butterfly more, you can just take a cleaver or a jacotta or whatever, and um, you just pound it out a little bit. But whatever you do, you got to make sure you season it so that it tastes good. So we're going to season it with a little essence or a little salt and pepper. And then what you do is once this cools, what you do is you start taking a little bit of that stuffing, you see? And you just pop all of that stuffing in there. And you get the idea. You keep letting it cool, stuff it. And what you do is you just fold it right over. And once you got it folded over like that, like I have it, you see, just like that, what you can do is then you take a little bit of uh, your butcher's twine and a couple of pieces like that of the butcher's twine, you see, and just kind of go under it. And then what you do is you just tie it together like I'm doing right there. You see that? Put it right under there. And you just tie them all together like that, okay? You get all that stuffing in there and you tie it. Now, once you do that, and you can do that a day before, two days before, you got this beautiful stuffed little pork roast, a little pork loin. I got a little uh, sausage, homemade, and apple. Woo! Boy, you want to talk about good. Hey, talk about good. You ever have the mashed potatoes at Emeralds? Well, here it is right here. And we've got some of those that I've been just cooking up and mashing up. Now, you go back to this pork roast, you season it up, and you sear it in this hot little skillet. And you put it in there for an internal temperature after you sear it inside of an oven for about 140 degrees. Okay? And you get this wonderful pork roast just like I have. Now, the one thing that I've told you about roasting meats, roasting meats is that they've got to rest. You know what I mean? So that they just settle, settle down a little bit. 
And uh, remember when you're going to go serve this, you want to take that twine off, right? And uh, then you just cut yourself a little steak like that, and uh, you serve that simply on the plate with some of those great Emerald Lagasse mashed potatoes. And boy, I'll tell you, you want to talk about good. Hey, what can I say? But uh, one thing I can say is join me tomorrow right here on the essence of Emerald. I'll see you now.